This presentation is brought to you by the Lean HR and People Development Summit, a product of Lean Frontiers. Learn more about the summit by visiting leanfrontiers.com slash LHR. Um, a few of you have actually seen this before, although it's had a few edits from there. Um, but uh, one of the things Picha Kuchus, Petra Kuchus? Petra Kuchus. Um, are designed for is things you're passionate about. And I've been doing lean most of my adult life. I started when I was in my early 20s, and now I'm in my mid-50s. And I was at Cambridge and on fire watching this culture. And I was going to be talking to a group who was new to lean. And I'm sitting there watching these guys, and I'm thinking to myself, how do you explain lean to people that don't know much about it? And I always think that people, when I first meet them, and I say, you know, what do you do? And I'm like, I work in this field of lean manufacturing. And they're like, what does that mean? Is it something? And so they immediately think what I'm talking about is how to be more efficient. That I had devoted my entire adult life to the idea of how to do things a little faster or cheaper or a little better. And um, if you knew me better, you would know that was just not true. <laughs> so I think one of the things I've become really passionate about is how to better communicate to people how lean feels. And for a lot of us in HR, it's not because that's the touchy-feely part. It's really where the energy's at. And when people don't know what we're talking about, they associate this as if it's a problem-solving method, it's some kind of set of tasks or tools and kanbans, and yet, for as many people as I know that are as crazy about lean as I am, it really has nothing to do with that. So my thing is on how it feels. So the first thing I think about lean is it's really inspiring. It's inspiring to me because it's all about uncovering the genius in people. It's really uncovering all that talent. Um, so it's not that the methodology of doing problem solving, it's teams doing problem solving who've never done it before. So that's what makes that inspiring. It's about supporting each other. I think lean environments are very much based upon teamwork. A lot of these um, even presentations talked a lot about the connectivity, about the way people help each other and support each other and chip in. It's a lot about learning. People learning, for most of us, anybody here think learning's fun? You like to learn? How do you feel about not learning? See, whenever we're in environments and we're not learning, things get stale, they get boring. So people don't realize lean is learning and learning is fun. It's about growing. And again, going back to the reason why I think I've devoted my life to it, it was about providing ways to grow for people that would never have had it. I often go back to one of the first um, forklift drivers that I saw do a continuous improvement project. And I had noticed him on his forklift every day going around the plant doing his forklift. And then I saw him in a problem solving team and out he came, shoulders back, chest out. He was there participating, thinking, using his judgment, using his problem solving. I could see him growing right before my eyes. It's about listening to each other. You know, we talk about A3s as if it's these series of steps, and yet a lot of it is like a much deeper level of listening. I thought Melissa's was a good example of that. They did one level of listening, and then they kept listening until they heard things more deeply. And that, to me, is always a profound experience, so worth doing. One of the most important things to me about Lean, it provides a lot of people an opportunity to lead that wouldn't otherwise. Even when I was young and I would look at the pyramid structure, a few people in charge, a bunch of people not in charge. And I would look at their lives and I would realize how much of them was wasted. And then when I started to be sitting on these interdepartmental problem solving teams and I would see people stepping up, I saw leaders were people who had been packers and people who had been machine operators, people who didn't talk to anybody all day. And then I watched them facilitate teams and they were amazing. So there's a lot of ways. Lean gives us lots of opportunities to lead in all kinds of ways without necessarily having to redesign the organizational structure, although you could. It's about service. I think every lean organization I've ever been in has a sense of service, a service to the external customers, a service to each other, a service to the bigger cause. But they tend to be very much more service-minded. And I don't know about you, I like being in an environment that's based upon service. It makes it, it's more, um, feels like it has more purpose. It feels like it has more reason to be doing it. 
So this, again, is one of the things I think about lean that makes it feel good for people. One of the things I enjoy also about it, I think it's about reflecting. So lean leadership is very much about allowing others to do for themselves. It's about empowering others to be all they can be. And it's about leaders. It's not about the few in charge. They know what to do. They solve all the problems, and the rest of you just do what I told you to do. And so it gives lots of opportunities, I think, for people to reflect on how to do things differently, not just more efficiently, but certainly how to lead differently, what the role of leadership really is. And I think that has a lot to do with the reflecting. And I think that has, um, for a lot of people, I think they kind of like that sense of personal perspective and that chance to go within. It's about asking questions, all kinds of questions. It's about, um, I think, not accepting the status quo. When I was seven years old, my poor mother, she was like, will you ever quit asking me why? I later tell people, if you have children that are hard to raise, they are likely continuous improvement champions in the making. That's why they want to know why everything is. She said, will you never accept the status quo? She didn't even, I, she didn't know I would later, that would be what I did for a living. I don't accept the status quo. So I think it's all about questioning and allowing, I think Karen said something this morning about safety, letting go of the fear and creating a place it's okay to question everything. It's certainly about participating. It's about having everybody touch it. I don't know what is almost more exciting than watching work environments become more participative. Things that used to be only a few people, that group, they decided it. I think lean environments are all about participation. Nothing is a matter of a few people doing anything. They're basically team-based work environments, so it's going to be all about participation. And participation's cool. This comes from my uh, Turner friends. Um, it's about collaboration. It is, um, I think, is team-based. I've certainly, even every time I go to do something, so I, like right now we're working on an engagement survey and we're sitting there in the HR department and we're saying, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, and then we said, you know what? This is a team-based activity. So we scrapped the plan, and then we've been out collaborating with people on what needs to happen, how to make the engagement process more what it needs to be, and getting everybody to be part of that collaboration. And so it always continues day in and day out to give us more ways to open ourselves up to collaborate for a better output and for a better process. It's about respecting each other. Almost every presentation today has mentioned the idea of respect. And I think in Lean, they always call it two pillars, right? The Toyota, the respect for people, and the continuous improvement. I think the older I get, the more important I realize it is for people to truly feel respected in the workplace. And that isn't about doing things more, efficiency, more efficiently. In fact, when people now say, so what is it you do? I'm like, I've devoted my life to the sacredness of mankind in the workplace. Like, it's really, truly respecting what each and every human being is capable of. And as an HR person, I think the problem is a lot of jobs are so narrowly defined, a machine operator, a forklift driver, that it isn't begin to encompass what a human being is capable of. And I mean each and every one not just the people in charge and not just the people, as long as they're probably functioning adults, they're capable of all kinds of things. So I think that's really what respect is really all about. And it's about caring, which is why the Cambridge family just makes me so crazy happy. Um, they're just really out there with the way they care. But again, most lean organizations I've ever been in, that connectivity, that team-based problem solving, that's doing it here together, creates a more caring environment. So it's not about just doing it faster or better. It's doing it in a way that there's just a lot more connection between people. So why do you think most people stay in their work environments? Because it's just the place they make the most money. Most of us know people stay in work environments that they feel connected to other people, that they feel cared about. You're not just saying that we have people there, um, that people are important just to, just to say it. It's really because that's, that's, what makes, that's what keeps that turnover down. And one of the funnest things about it, which I always think is fun, lean environments will always have a lot of celebrating going on. There's lots to celebrate. Setting small goals, celebrating that. Celebr teams celebrating their successes. Celebrating um, all kinds of achievements that they make. 
So continuous improvement is hard, is, should be hardwired. Every time you hit those milestones, stop and celebrate, stop and celebrate, stop and celebrate. So as I said, I don't think lean is about feeling about things like, like you did your tech times down. It's really about all of these things. It's exciting. It's interesting. Um, I think it makes, first of all, I think even when I was seven, I thought change was just more interesting. I think anything that stays the same is boring. And I think trying new things, um, even in the last uh, day I've been here, I've been seeing people try some things they've never done before. For Tracy to step up in front of a group of people and talk about Turner was a big jump. So it's exciting. It gets us to do things we haven't done before. It's certainly about sharing. It's about all the things that go into teamwork. I think anytime teams work together, you create connections and ways people share, and that changes the workplace. Yes, they may share their processes. Yes, they may share their standard work, and yes, they get better at stuff, but they share, and they connect. They take risks. I think a lot of what's involved is you take risks. Going back to Tracy stepping right up here and saying, I think I'm just going to stand up here. I've seen people, especially when that machine operator gets off that um, forklift or gets away from their machine or leaves their forklift and steps up and runs a team or participates in a team or tries to do something they've never done before or um, all the things that this, you know, even HR people doing things they've never done before. All that takes risk taking and it gets us out of our comfort zone doing new things. Um, it's certainly about teaming and all the things that go into teamwork. So Lean allows you to find ways to support and inspire, learn and grow, listen and ask questions, lead, serve, reflect, show respect, care for others, collaborate, celebrate success, create excitement, share ideas, take risks, and work as a team. So surprise yourself. All right, that's it for me. This presentation is brought to you by the Lean HR and People Development Summit, a product of Lean Frontiers. Learn more about the summit by visiting leanfrontiers.com slash LHR.